has earned the chastisement Jesus said there would be wars and rumors of wars earthquakes in diverse places famine pestilence and this is just the beginning of sorrows and the book said had not that time been shortened for his elect's sake no soul would be left alive on the earth now you and I and we have entered a time of trouble like there never was since there was a time and a nation you can read about our actions in the scriptures for the prophets said that we would be just like we are and if we don't make a change we will suffer a terrible terrible chastisement from God so America has entered that time of trouble. It says in that time Michael, the archangel, would rise to stand for his people. Uh, I was sitting one day with the messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I reported something to him at the table with some of his laborers. And he knocked on some glass and he wanted them to listen to what God had shown me in an out of the body experience of the Pope of Rome. And when I finished, he said to me, brother, God has shown you the mind of his and my worst enemy and then he asked brother did you know that you were an angel I said no sir dear apostle well what is an angel it's a messenger <laughs> especially a messenger of God. The Bible tells us to be careful how we entertain strangers. For we may be entertaining angels unaware. So angels are human beings like yourself. Well, I never paid it much attention. You know, he says things, you listen and you're frightened by what he says, and you run from it until you run into it. America has earned destruction. We have 135 countries where America has soldiers. Out of 192 countries on the earth, America has soldiers in 135. She has bases in most of these countries. Did you know that America has gone throughout the world threatening nations with a pullback of military assistance and other forms of aid unless they signed a document saying that they will never bring an American citizen before the International Criminal Court. Almost 90 nations have signed that document why would America not want people to bring her citizens before an international criminal court and then he asked brother did you know that you were an angel 
Malcolm X was Louis Farrakhan's mentor, his teacher in the Nation of Islam. They believed that the white man was evil, that the black and white races should live separately. When Malcolm X revealed publicly that Elijah Muhammad, the leader of the Nation of Islam, was guilty of impregnating several of his teenage secretaries in direct violation of his own preachings of no sex outside marriage, Farrakhan was outraged, and he wrote that Malcolm was, quote, worthy of death. On February 21st, 1965, as Malcolm spoke in New York City's Audubon Ballroom, members of the Nation of Islam opened fire, killing him in front of hundreds of his supporters. Malcolm's wife and children were there, including Atala Shabazz, Malcolm's eldest daughter. She was six at the time. As you will see on 60 Minutes this Sunday, Minister Farrakhan met Atala Shabazz for the first time, first time in front of television cameras. And Farrakhan acknowledged his role in Malcolm's assassination. I wish that Malcolm X were alive today and not dead. Yes, it is true that black men pull the trigger. We cannot deny any responsibility in this. Where we are responsible, where our hands are a part of this, we beg God's mercy and forgiveness. What did you expect to come out of this conversation? What did you hope would come? I genuinely hope that perhaps a healing can come to Ms. Shabazz and her family. As I may have been complicit in words that I spoke, Frankly, uh, it has been a uh, well-known fact, uh, though only in the form of rumor, that uh, there has been a great deal of uh, apprehension at my being out of the black Muslim movement on the part of the black Muslims themselves. And I had uh, stated in a newspaper article about an effort to take my life back in January, and at that time the Muslims denied it. In fact, they tried to make it appear to my brother that I was insane. But on a program in Chicago called Hotline, was moderated by Wesley South, John Ali, the national secretary, admitted, uh, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, one of these days last week, that they absolutely were going to kill me. Why are they threatening your life? Well, uh, primarily because they're afraid that I will tell the real reason that they've been, that I'm out of the black Muslim movement, which I never told, I kept to myself. But the real, real reason is that Elijah Muhammad, the head of the movement, is the father of eight children by six different teenage girls, different, uh, six different teenage girls who were his private personal secretary. Uh, four of them had one child apiece by him, uh, two of them had two children, and one of those two is pregnant right now in Los Angeles uh, with their uh, third child. And uh, the, the one who first made me aware of this was Wallace Muhammad, Mr. Muhammad's son. And it was uh, their fear that uh, if I remained in the black Muslim movement, and this came into the knowledge of his followers, that they would leave him and follow me. So uh, a, a plan immediately was set in motion to uh, take me down, put me out, and uh, the statement that I allegedly made, or not that I allegedly made, I did make it, the statement that I made about Kennedy was used as a, a pretext to take me down. But in reality, it was, the, it was because I had come to New York and told Joseph, the captain in New York, and uh, the secretary and the minister in Boston about these children that Mr. Muhammad had. And it was that, that right there was the real reason for my being out of the movie. Did you what get out of the will you take to protect yourself from this threat? I take no steps. I have a rifle. If anybody comes to my house, without a good reason. I, I intend to try and use it. Uh, and that's all.